Thank God for the blood. Amen. Amen. Cleansing blood. Yes, sir. Saving blood. Yes, sir. Redeeming blood. Amen. Amen. O Lamb of God, crucified yes, for my sins. He bled yes. and died. Oh, how precious Amen. is blood. Second Corinthians chapter 12. Beginning at uh, the first verse. It is doubtless not profitable for me to boast or to brag. And what Paul is saying here that it doesn't benefit us to brag or to boast. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body I do not know or whether out of the body I do not know, God knows such a one was caught up to the third heaven. And I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows how he was caught up into paradise wow. and heard inexpressible words which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such a one I will boast Yet of myself I will not boast, except in my infirmities. For though I might desire to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will speak the truth. But I refrain, lest anyone should think of me above what he sees me to be, or hears from me. And lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations. A thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasures in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. We're going to talk about sufficient grace as you take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Sufficient grace. Now, Paul is no stranger to Bible <coughs> readers and those who give any time to trying to um, hear from God through reading of his word. Um, the word expressed through the rhema that is what we are giving uh, doing now this rhema word it is virtually impossible to spend any time reading the New Testament without writing into the Apostle Paul or having confrontation with the Apostle Paul for he wrote um, some two-thirds of, of the New Testament, so um, it is only uh, right that you will see much of the writings in the New Testament having been penned by Paul. We are traditionally um, mindful of special dates and events 
in our lives. Um, there are some dates that are more important than others, more significant to us than others. Um, those who um, study history and who are somewhat politically inclined um, remember certain events that have happened uh, throughout the history of our United States. For, for an instance, um, um, the Pearl Harbor um, um, event or bombing, or more, to bring it more currently, um, September the 11th of the year of, of 2000. Um, we are familiar with um, catastrophic events that have happened. More recently, um, the Hurricane Katrina in 2005. Uh, it is significant to me, although I was not there, but uh, it, it resulted in my family moving to Savannah. Uh, but they being there when it happened, I'm sure it was more uh, dramatic uh, for them. Um, and in your life, there are events and dates that are important and significant that when mentioned, um, you always have fresh memories of those things. Uh, in the text today, the Apostle Paul actually is referring to an event that God permitted him to witness. Um, and in, his, in the words of his testimony, um, all that he remember is what happened. Uh, as for his mental, emotional, spiritual, psychological state at that time, he does not recall. Um, it could have been an out-of-body out of experience, but one thing he remembers is that God took him to a place where he had never been before. And when you walk with God, you will witness and see things that you've never seen and witnessed before. Amen. When you walk with God and when you uh, line up with the Word of God, when you have that special close relationship with the Lord, God shows you things many times that He does not show to anyone else. Amen. And sometimes the purpose for doing so is so that you will not get caught up in yourself so that you will keep to yourself um, what has actually happened. In this case with Apostle Paul, um, Paul had a reputation and a spirit of being braggadocious. He had a spirit of bragging on himself. He was a man of God, he was an apostle ordained by Jesus Christ. Um, he was a Pharisee of Pharisees. He was uh, born of the tribe of Benjamin, circumcised on the eighth day. The number eight is important because it means new beginnings. But yet, uh, though he had the hand of God on him, he struggled with his flesh. And he goes to great detail in Romans chapter 7 to give to us his testimony in his autobiography of his physical or his spiritual struggle, the flesh warring against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And so, though he was powerful in his ministry, he still struggled with his flesh. And one area particularly that he struggled in was the area of bragging on himself. And there are people like that today. They are Christians, they are children of God but they call attention to themselves. Uh, they lift themselves, they praise themselves, but, but the word of God says, let another man praise you, let someone else praise you. Don't, don't, don't go around talking about you. You know, let someone else observe in you the work of God, what God is doing. And so Paul confesses here that to keep him from being lifted up in himself, getting full of himself, God gave to him a thorn in some translations. It is read a thorn. Um, 
and he was caught up here in paradise or the third heaven and to so that he would not think of himself more highly than he ought to have thought of himself God gave to him uh, this infirmity a messenger of sin your experiences that appear to be a trial beyond your ability to deal with comes from God through Satan. Because God or Satan cannot do any more than what God permits him to do. God knows each of our appetites. I'm not talking about the physical desire for food, but God knows what is in us that causes us to do what we do. God knows what is in us that causes us to think the way we think. And who better to talk about or witness about or testify about his downfall as a bragger of himself than the Apostle Paul. He says he was caught up in the third heaven. And when we think of heaven, we usually think about a place above us. But heaven has more than one dimension. Uh, the, technically, there are three dimensions of heaven. First, there is the heaven known as the outer space. Then there is the starry heaven uh, that consists of the elements. And then there is the third heaven where God and his angels reign and, and rule. Paul says that he was caught up in the third heaven, which means that this heaven had to have been where God and his angels rule. Amen. No wonder he would write that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the good thing that God has in store. But it was not permissible to Paul to share what he saw. It was not <coughs> permissible for, for Paul to tell. You know, you can't tell everything. Amen. Because everybody that you talk to and share things with do not listen for the right reasons. All right. Some of the people that you um, socialize with or associate with on a regular are not really your friends. And you can't tell your so-called friends ever. There are some things about you that you don't need to tell everybody. Because um, some of your experiences are for you only not for everyone else. Such was the case with Paul, and the Lord gave to him, in the original King James text, it would be re referred to as a thorn in the flesh. Someone said the side, but the word says flesh. In his physical, mental, emotional body, something was given to him to remind him of humility. Something was given to him. An experience was given to him um, <coughs> to happen in his life so that he would not think of himself <coughs> to be better than someone else. <coughs> things, material things, sometimes have a negative effect on the one who possesses them. Meaning that sometimes the possession of elaborate things can result in twisting our minds. Everybody can't handle being financially rich. And the, and the record has proven that the average person who wins the lottery are broke within five years or less. Amen. Amen. It's because 
the possession of money has the ability to control us. And so Paul was given this experience not for others' benefit, the benefit of others, but for himself, although his experience will result in teaching us three things. And that is that this experience was tailored to show us how to reach up to God, how to receive from God, and how to rejoice in God. So what did happen with Paul in this third heaven experience? All he says is that the Lord permitted him, showed him some things that he charged him not to talk about, not to tell anybody else about. And although he does not go into the details of what he saw, he doesn't mention what he saw, but he remembered what he saw. All right. All right. All right. It is important to remember what God is doing in your life. Yeah. It is important to remember how God is moving and working in your life. Yeah. See, oftentimes we forget who brought us, right. who is keeping us, uh -huh. who is causing us to survive, who is giving to us life, who is sustaining us. And, 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 and so as God blesses us, he also allows us in the midst of the blessings to receive thorns, to receive struggle. Yes. That it's not by happenstance that you struggle. You need to struggle. It is essential that you struggle. Because it is in struggling that you gain strength. And God in his infinite wisdom says to Paul, if I release you as you are to go back and tell what you just saw, you already, you already have a problem with pride. You already have a problem with bragging. You already have a problem because of the fact that you've gone to all of these schools and you've sat at the feet of the mail and the fact that you are a Pharisee and because that you have, uh, you can speak all of these uh, several languages fluently, that you are so educated uh, that you think that you sometimes have more power than other folk. Yes. You can speak in tongues, you possess all the gifts of the Holy Spirit, but aside from that, on your carnal side, that's where our problem is, that's where our, our problem lies, and the reason that the flesh oftentimes win over your spirit is because that's what you feed the most. It, your ego is what you feed the most. Your pride is what you feed the most. Uh, you, you, it's easy for you to think of what you have and what you've done, but it's a challenge to say God did it. Amen. It's easy to count your degrees or your money, but it's a challenge to say, look what God did. This, right. this is all the Lord is doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Now, God doesn't uh, want us to be ignorant. God wants us to be taught. God wants us to be educated. But God doesn't want you to forget that he is omniscient. He knows everything. So whatever you know, he teaches you. Amen. He was given a thorn. He was given um, a, a problem. Let's put it this way. He was, he was given uh, a struggle in his flesh. What was the struggle? We don't know specifically, but we do know that there were several things about the Apostle Paul that could have been a struggle for him. First of all, after his Damascus Road experience when he met the Lord, he ended up with poor vision. Well, if you remember, he was blinded 
by the noonday sun when he met the Lord on the road to Damascus to continue persecuting the the saints, the Christians. He, that could have been one of his problems. Uh, secondly, he's described as having a short man syndrome. That, that uh, he struggled with being short. Thirdly, uh, he, we believe and have been informed that Paul was, did, did not, not only was he short in stature, but he did not stand up straight when he walked, that he had a hump back. Fourthly, it is said that he was not pleasant to look upon, that he was not attractive. And someone said it might have been why he ended up in divorce. Some teach he was never married, but that goes against the teaching of the regulations, the rules for being a Pharisee. In order to sit on the Sanhedrin council, you had to have a wife. So he was at one point married. It could be um, why he talked so strongly in uh, 1 Corinthians 7 about leaderships, uh, people in positions of leadership being married. He, he says, I wish that you was even as I. I wish that you had the gift to abstain because those that are married seek to put the spouse first and, and the work of the Lord second. Uh, so that could have been one of his reasons for writing that, but whatever his problem was, it lingered with him and it remained with him. It vexed him so sorely and severely that he went to God three times. Troubles and trials and struggles will drive you to God. Amen. <laughs> will force you to God because there's some things that happen in our lives that we cannot handle on our own. Amen. There, there are some things that we experience in our lives that if it had not been for God there to hold us. Thank you, Lord. Yes, sir. And if you have not experienced such an experience, um, uh, we pray that you don't. But listen, the enemy comes to do three things. You already know what they are. Yes. But God allows the enemy yes. to come to us yes. so that we will remain prideful. Amen. Look, look what Paul said he did. The first thing he did, this, this thorn, this tragedy, this struggle that was given to him by Satan. Here's another example of God sending Satan to us. You remember Job. God sent Job to Satan. Or rather sent Satan to Job. You remember where are you going? Up and down the earth. Seeking whom I, I might devour. Or to and fro. Actually he doesn't say whom I might devour. To and fro. Peter said seeking whom he might, might devour. 